Hello, in this video I'll show you how to make a paper frame with inserts for a light display shadow box. In Cricut Design Space, I create a new project. I insert a square and change the size to 10 inches. Then I change the color to white. Now I'm going to save the project and name it Shadow Box Frame. Next, I insert another square into the project. I change the size to 0.75 inches. Then I copy paste and drag the second square towards the bottom. Now I highlight the two dark squares and the large square and align left. Then I click the dark square and the large square and click align top. I repeat with the other dark square and the large square and align bottom. Then I zoom in just so that I can see the top and bottom of the large square and then I click shapes and insert a line. This starts as a score line, so I click under Operation and change this to a basic cut. Then I change the height to 0.2 inches. Now I have a small cut line that I need to duplicate. So I press Command or Control C, and then press Command or Control V six times until I have a total of seven small cut lines. I highlight all seven lines and a line left. Then I copy and paste again. I copy and paste a total of three times until I have 28 total lines. Now I highlight all 28 lines and drag them closer to the 10 inch square. I click on only the very top line and bring it up so that the top of the line is in line with the top edge of the box. Then I click only on the very bottom line and line it up so that the bottom edge is in line with the bottom of the box. I highlight all 28 lines again and then a line left. I highlight all 28 lines again, and this time when I click the Align drop-down, I'm going to go to the very bottom selection, which is Distribute Vertically. This will balance everything between the top and bottom lines that we lined up to our 10-inch box. Then I highlight again and attach them all together. I copy and paste this attachment and then bring the copy over to the right of the dark boxes. With these lines selected, I press the Command key and click the top dark box and then align right. Now I highlight both of the dark boxes and the lines and copy and paste. I click Attach and then rotate these 180 degrees. I prefer to type the degrees of rotation into the top right box rather than manually dragging it around. Once it's rotated, I move it to the right side of the large white box. Then I have this selected and select the large white box and click Align Right. Now I copy and paste another set of lines from my extra lines to the right side of the box and rotate these 90 degrees. I place one set of lines underneath the top row of boxes and then I place one set of lines on top of the bottom row of boxes. Now I detach everything and delete out all four of the dark boxes. The lines that we just created will score the paper so that we'll be able to fold it easily along these lines, but it won't create one solid cut all the way through the paper, which would prevent us from being able to fold here. However, if we folded the paper as it is now, our corners would be doubled up, so we are going to have to fully cut through one edge of the corners. To do this, I'm deleting out the two extra lines on the horizontal piece of each square that we just deleted out. Now I insert another line and then change the operation to basic cut. This line needs to be 0.75 inches, which is the same width of the large black squares that we just deleted. I rotate this line 90 degrees and then I line it up with our horizontal fold lines. We need to add this cut to the top left and bottom left squares and to the top right and bottom right squares. Then, using the scroll bar on the right side of the screen, I hide the white square. I highlight all of the lines that we've just created inside that square and attach them together. Then I unhide the square. Now I highlight the square and the lines, and then click center from the Align drop-down. Then I attach both of these together. I copy and paste so that this will be our back of the box, and then we need to make a hole for the front piece of the box. I drag the back away and then I insert a new square. I set this square size to 7 inches. Then I select the gray square and the white square and align to center. To be able to slice this 7 inch hole out, we have to detach our lines and our large square first. 
Once detached, I select the gray square and the large white square and then click Slice. Then I delete out the extras. Now that I have a slice result, I send it to the back so I can see the lines. Then I highlight everything and attach it together again. Now we have the back and front piece set up to create a shadow box frame. I move these out of the way and insert a square to create our inner frame. This square needs to be 8.5 inches in size. I change the color to white and then I copy and paste three times so I have four total pages. Then I insert another square and change the size to six inches. This will be the internal dimension for the backmost frame. For the next forward layer, the dimension should be 6.25 inches. The next layer up is 6.5 inches, and the frontmost layer is 6.75 inches. Recall that the square cutout of our very front piece was 7 inches, so each of these layers are offset by a quarter inch. Now for each of these individual layers, I highlight both squares and then click Align and select Center from the drop-down. Once they're centered, I click Slice. After the slice is complete, I delete out the extra squares. I repeat the same process until I have all four of these layers cut out. Now when I highlight all four layers and click Center, you can see how each of the successive layers are offset. This is going to provide great depth in the shadow box. The final step I do is drag each of these four layers into our front and back layer for the frame. We need these four internal layers to fit well within our folded lines, so I actually size this down to 8.4 inches so that it's not a tight fit. If it's too tight of a fit, then the paper can actually bend. And now we have a paper frame with inserts that's customizable for any shadow box display. To adjust the size based on the box that you're using, just make sure that you highlight all of the layers and adjust them at the same time. This will keep the ratios consistent. Thanks for watching this video on how to make a paper frame with inserts for a light display shadow box. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and as always, like and subscribe to see more content.